Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. You brave, brave souls that came out today. It's good to see you all. A few announcements as we get started this morning. There's lots of things going on this week. Um, Tuesday at 2 o'clock, Trinity Lutheran Church here in town, their ladies will be having their pre-Lenten tea, like always. Um, again, that's at 2 o'clock. Masks are required. Um, the treats that they normally have afterwards are going to be to-go only. So um, their program will start at 2, and then the treats will be afterwards. Uh, let's see, then Wednesday night, there will be no youth group on Wednesday because at 7 o'clock we're going to gather here with the Presbyterian Church for our Ash Wednesday service. Again, that's 7 o'clock this Wednesday night. Uh, our Lenten study will begin next Sunday. We do have a few of the study books left, so if you would like one of those, the cost on the books is $6, and that study will start next Sunday morning. Uh, you can either join us live in the library at 9.30 or via Zoom. Uh, if you want that Zoom information, call the church office. We'll get that to you. Or Sunday night at 6.30, again, beginning next week, we'll meet in the library for that study. Don Steptoe is going to be celebrating his 90th birthday in a couple of weeks, and the family would love uh, a card shower for him. So if you would like to send a note to Don, you can call the church office, or we have his address posted in the window of the office here um, uh, to get that information. And then finally, good news today, our ad board met Monday night, and we voted that we're going to resume singing in our worship services today. So lucky ducks, you don't have to just listen to me anymore. You all get to join in the fun. So with that, let's stand as we sing our opening song. It's number 2272 in the small songbook. This is Holy Ground. We're gonna sing it through two times. Let us join together for our call to worship. Beyond our busyness, above the cold winter floor, there is a glory rising, born of heaven and reaching out to each one of us. That transforms darkness into hope, that brings life from a cross where old life ends and new life is born. Let us worship from the mountain and hear again, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. Amen. And let us join our hearts and our voices together in our opening prayer. God of mighty tempest and devouring fire, you come to us shrouded in mystery. 
just as Peter, James, and John did, so too will we follow Christ up the mountain to behold his glory. Who are Moses and Elijah that we should not join their ranks among the faithful? What is to prevent us from shining with Christ today? Give us eyes and ears of faith, Holy One, that we may see the heavens open and hear your voice calling us to listen to and to follow your Son. Amen. Please be seated. Our psalm reading this morning is Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. Let's read this responsibly. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Our God comes and does not keep silence, before whom is a devouring fire, round about whom is a mighty storm. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Amen. For those of you who are worshiping here with us in the sanctuary, I hope you had a chance to present your tithes and your offerings as you came in. For those joining us from home today, your offerings can be presented either through mailing them to the church or bringing them by the church office or setting up automated giving directly through Coin Bank. Now that our gifts have been given to God, let's sing together the doxology. our gifts to God. God of transformation, we come together as those who have met you on the mountaintop. We have each had our holy encounters with you, and in those moments, we have wanted to stay on the mountain and retreat from the world. We know that is our longing, not yours. So as we offer our gifts this morning in response to your blessings in our life, Remind us that our mission begins as we leave this place and help us hold our memories of those mountaintop encounters with you in our hearts. We pray boldly in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite the kids to come forward for children's time. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you guys today? Good. What is today? Um, Valentine's, Day. Valentine's Day. And you know what? I have a Valentine for you guys. Who can read the front of that? I love you. I love you, it says. I love you. Who do you think this Valentine is from? It's not from me. It's from God. You know what? There's a very special verse in the Bible that I think is perfect for Valentine's Day. And that verse is written inside our Valentine here. And I'm going to read it to you. Tell me if you've ever heard this verse before. God loves the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Have you heard that verse before? Cassidy has. This is our perfect verse for Valentine's Day. It tells us God loves the world, everybody in the world, so much that that's why he sent Jesus for us. 
Jesus came to this world because God loves us that much. That God wanted to be with us, that God wanted to teach us how to live and how to love one another and take care of one another. And then Jesus ended up dying for us to take away our sins so that we can live with God forever. That's pretty special, isn't it? Will you guys say a special Valentine's prayer with me? Will you fold your hands, bow your heads, and repeat after me? Dear God, God, we love you. you. Not just on Valentine's Day, Day. but but every day. Thank you you. for loving us us. and sending Jesus Jesus. to show us your love. love. Amen. Amen. Happy Valentine's Day. Day Thank you. Oh, thanks, buddy. (laughs) Thanks for coming up, guys. Bye. Our next hymn is one that may not be familiar to you, um, but it speaks to our Bible passage today, so we're going to give it a shot. If you want to follow along uh, in the songbook, it's number 2102 in the small songbook. This is Swiftly Past the Clouds of Glory. Our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Listen now for the word of God. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. 
Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I was in elementary school, I can't remember exactly what grade, we uh, had to write a paper on a historical figure that we looked up to. I can remember going down to the school library where I found a whole series of biographies on influential people that were written specifically for kids. And I browsed through several of them before I ended up checking out the one on Eleanor Roosevelt. I became fascinated by her. I ended up checking out more books about her, reading everything I could find in our school library, and even moving on to the city library to see what more I could learn about her. If asked, I would often say that when I grew up, I wanted to be Eleanor Roosevelt. Her work for the rights of women and for minorities and refugees inspired me. A woman living in an age where just about everything was run by men. Her courage and her strength to step up and lead, even in hostile situations. To simply be her brilliant, compassionate, strong self in an age where women were more valued for being a pinup left me in awe and helped me to form my own ideas about what is important in this world. Learning about her, studying her, helped shape me. Now you all hear me say pretty regularly how Jesus' life is an example for us to follow. That we should love as Jesus loves and serve as Jesus serves. And scripture absolutely shows us that. Each and every one of us who claim to be disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, should try to model our lives on his. We should all want to be Jesus when we grow up. We should be inspired by him, awed by him, and shaped by him. But then we come to this passage from Mark, and we think, well, I can't do that. We aren't even sure exactly what that is. Everything in this passage sounds mysterious and maybe even a little supernatural and definitely impossible. And so we chuck this story aside and, and say, well, we can't follow that example because only Jesus can do that. Well, maybe. But maybe there's something here that we are to learn. Maybe it's but not only Jesus. What exactly do we know about what happened up on that mountain? Scriptures really give us a pretty limited picture. We know that Jesus and his three closest friends went up a mountain. And while they were there, something about Jesus changed. He was transfigured. He almost seemed to shine. And the disciples saw not only Jesus, but but two other men. And scriptures identify them as, as Moses and Elijah, the men most closely associated with the law and the prophets. We don't know even how Peter and James and John recognized who these two other men were. Did they have name tags? How did they know? We don't know exactly what happened to Jesus. We only know that for that time, in that place, the disciples saw him differently. And you know, I can't think about this encounter with Jesus and Moses and Elijah without thinking about something that Jesus once said. In Matthew 5, Jesus says, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And I think this encounter points us to that. 
Moses representing the law, the man to whom God gave the laws to bring to the people. Moses isn't destroyed by Jesus. He's in fellowship with Jesus. And then we have Elijah, the greatest of all the prophets. Again, not destroyed by Jesus, but is with Jesus. Moses and Elijah could only reveal a part of all that God is in their roles and in their limited human capacity. But Jesus gives us a fuller picture. In Jesus, we can see that the law and the prophets culminate together. We can see how the laws point us to Christ, how the prophets point us to Christ. But when these two come together and all the pieces of the puzzle fit together, we get a fuller image of who God is and who God is calling us to be. It is often said by biblical scholars that the reason Jesus appears so dazzling white in that moment, the reason the disciples even couldn't fully look at him was because God's glory was being revealed in him in that moment. They were used to the humanity of Jesus softening the full glory of the divine. But in that moment, the divine broke through. Is it any wonder that Peter wanted to stay in that moment? To dwell in communion with God in all God's glory. That was the original plan for humanity. I can only imagine that to experience that, even for just a moment, had to have been like heaven on earth. Who wouldn't want to stay? But Jesus knows that there's work to do. If everyone is going to experience that, there's work to do. They had to go back down the mountain. And so back to our original question. What is it that we are to do with this? How is Jesus our example in this passage? How are we to be shaped by this encounter? I think this reading is the culmination of all that we have been reading over the past several weeks. This series began at Jesus' baptism where we heard the same words we heard today. This is my son. The beloved, listen to him. And we learned on that Sunday that when God speaks, we should listen. Then we were reminded not to judge others for any reason, for good or for ill. And then we heard Jesus' call to follow, even though plagued as we are by our own demons. And we learned that following Christ means being in service to the world out of pure love and gratitude to God. And now this I think this story is telling us that if we truly live into our call to follow Jesus, if we live lives of love and service to all the world without judgment, then the others around us will begin to see the glory of God shining through us. If we are the hands and feet of Christ in this world, if the entire family of faith is the physical body of Christ here and now, then God's glory should shine through us. Just as it shone through the body of Christ on that mountain. But this isn't something that we can achieve all on our own. God's glory will only shine through us when we, as the collective body of Christ, more fully embody his love and grace and service to the world around us in union with the Holy Spirit who lives and dwells in us. And that should be our goal. Our objective, that is what we should strive to be and to do. To be the physical representation of God's love with and for the world and all who are in it. Friends, don't we want to grow up to be like Christ? So often we set our sights and our goals on other humans. Does anybody remember the old uh, ad campaign with the slogan, I want to be like Mike? It was a Gatorade ad campaign. Well, let me tell you right here and now, I could drink all the Gatorade in the world and I am not going to play basketball like Michael Jordan. It ain't going to happen. It's an unattainable goal. But we can 
grow more and more like Jesus. We were built, created, formed, and shaped to resemble Christ, to bear the image of our maker. But even more, if we don't show the world the glory of God, the grace of God, who will? If those who call themselves children of God do not resemble God, then who could? If not us, then who? If not now, then when? Our world is becoming more and more secular, more and more reluctant to believe in anything that they cannot see and touch. So let's help them see. Let's show them what love with skin on looks like. Let us embody in word and in deed the love and the grace of God. Let us make it so obvious that no one can deny the glory and majesty of our great Lord. May it be so. Amen. As we come to our prayer time, uh, I think I want to definitely lift up our farmers, our ranchers, our first responders, anyone who has to be out, uh, linemen, <laughs> I'm sure there's a few of them having to be out, anyone who has to be out in this weather, um, we just ask for God's protection for them, as well as all the livestock. Um, we know calving season is, is getting started, and this cold is just not good for all those babies. So we just pray for God's protection in this cold. We had some prayers come in uh, over our Facebook feed. We've got prayers for the family of Mark Yule, prayers for the family of Charles Schock. He's the brother of Pat Hassert. Prayers for Kurt and Janice Wilbur. <laughs> says, no worries for Kurt and Janice. They just need our love. <laughs> and prayers for Violet Monker. Are there joys and concerns that you would lift up this morning? If not, I invite you into a time of silent prayer, and then I'll guide us through the remainder of our prayer time. Let us pray. Lord of infinite mercy, we would make a Broadway production of this transfiguration event because, well, because we wouldn't take the time to understand its significance for our lives. We are in such a hurry to memorialize everything that the power and the meaning of the event become pale or altered in our memories. Help us look at Jesus with new eyes. Those eyes that see him in light of the witness of the ages. That see Jesus as the one who comes to set people free, to heal, to bring hope and peace. The Lord, make us ready to become faithful disciples rather than simply remaining dazzled by the mountaintop experience. Give us the strength and courage we need this day to witness to Jesus' love by the many deeds of mercy and justice that we can offer in his name. For Lord, we offer ourselves imperfect but willing to serve. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name as we pray together as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our closing hymn. Uh, it's number 188, Christ is the world's light.
And now receive the benediction. Go now and speak of what you have seen of God's glory. Don't cling to the holy moments when the heavens overshadow you. But as the Lord lives, listen to Christ and follow him. From the places of revelation to the places of mission. And may God shine the light of glory into your hearts. May Christ be with you and never leave you. And may the Spirit renew the image of God within you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Joe will come dismiss everyone.